famous restaurants takes you to a wacky eatery in Arizona, where big meals are served by little people. Welcome to the Look at this bar. It's all done to miniature scale. We'll travel to Taipei, where an ancient Asian art is still smoking hot. Gene Simmons, you're a hard out. We'll jet to the Czech Republic and go back in time. Uh. I mean, way back. I would like a table for one. <laughs> and later, we're off to the UK, where the proof is in the pudding. Apple and cinnamon crumble, let the games begin. <laughs> Every town's got that one rowdy restaurant that's notorious for being the place to go when you want to cut loose and have a good time. Here in Scottsdale, Arizona, I think I found that place. Shut up and get inside already. Welcome to Gilligan's. Gilligan's is probably the craziest restaurant you've ever seen. Gilligan's is all about casual eats and a fun party atmosphere, where the servers are little, but the portions are huge. My favorite part of working at Gilligan's working at the world's only midget bar. Check this out. Look at this bar. I love this. It's all done to miniature scale. Gilligan's was inspired by the TV show Gilligan's Island. It's what I would piece together if I was on Gilligan's Island. It's just a fun place. Welcome to Chewy's Mini Bar. So you think I can get myself a big people drink here? <laughs> sure, you can get anything really big. Small bar, small bartender, big beers. Hello. Oh. So Chewy, you have a menu here? Yeah, yeah Chewy. The food here is great. I feed a family of 10 with one order. We have the wings, burgers. We do have homemade clam chowder, homemade fish and chips. I love it. You won't find better food for the price. It's awesome. I suggest the crab din din, okay. along with a cup of clam chowder and the fish and chips. I'll have it all. All right, cool. How would you describe the food here? Fried, greasy, fattening, delicious. The little people thing here at Gilligan's all started with Chewy. He came in looking for a bartending job. It's just a teeny tiny bar with teeny tiny bartenders. I prefer to be called a midget because it sounds cooler. You described to Danny DeVito as a little person, not a midget, and I'm a midget. Let me show you around. This is a normal bar setup, but it's been customized for a little person. Nothing's short in this bar except for me. We have a working sink, we have a working gun. This is amazing. Everything you'd expect in a conventional bar, just a foot and a half lower. It feels good to like finally walk up yeah. to a bar and not like ask someone to order you a drink. People ask me if I'm from the Midget Bar at Gilligan's, and I say, yeah, I'm proud to be a midget. Here we have Captain Mike's seafood oh platter. Gosh. Holy cow. We have the fish and chips filet, right. the shrimp, and the clams, and the half pound of fries to go with it. All of our food at Gilligan's is a huge portions. Every time someone comes in and orders something, they're gonna leave not wanting any more. All the food's excellent. It's really good, I love eating here. We got our famous homemade clam chowder and the Din Din platter. Look at this, homemade clam chowder. Nice, great atmosphere, great vibe, great food. Deep fried shrimp, nice crispy batter. Let's just jump into this crab, ah, beautiful. The food here is absolutely delicious. That's a perfect onion ring. I'm gonna need an extra large size doggy bag for this one. This place is packed. I mean, everyone's eating and drinking, having a good time. I think when people come in here and they and they see a midget and they see the people that are in here, it really does set the tone that they are gonna have fun in here. We have all the games for them. We got the huge Jenga. Oh. This is gonna be ugly. We got the beer pong, and we have the wheel of booze. The prank that we pull on customers, it's pretty funny here. We'll give them a shot of food coloring. We do put the world's hottest peppers in people's food and just mess with them. Some women, they're scared of little people. They come in here, but Chewy chases them around and makes them run out the front door. It's about having a good time here at Gilligan. Oh, wow, I gotta check out where this is going. We have our food challenges that people can come and do. We have the tater tot challenge. Everybody loves that one. That's five pounds of tater tots. I couldn't even imagine eating 20 tater tots to myself. <laughs> also, our corn dog challenge. That's 20 corn dogs. Then, if they finish the food challenge, they get 50 bucks. What do you think their chances are? Corn dogs definitely don't happen. There's zero chance. Zero. I just want to taste one of these. See how hot they are. 
I like hard food. That is hot. It's always fun just seeing people try to push themselves to see if they can do it. So how are those tasting right now? They taste good, but they're full. I'm going to go down. you want to go home? Yes. Go, go, go. I think I get it. This place is really an eclectic mix of little people, huge portions, and an enormous amount of love. $50. You don't need to pull any strings to get into Taipei's Sea Joint Puppet Restaurant, but once you're in, you can pull them to your heart's content. Hello, welcome to Sea Joint Puppet. How do you do? Bye. Nice to meet you. Sea Joint Puppet Theater is only a puppet restaurant in Taiwan. You won't find Bert and Ernie or the Cookie Monster here, but at Sea Joint Puppet, classic Taiwanese puppetry merges with traditional food. This is basically just a really great place to be able to capture some of your childhood memories and enjoy local Taiwanese food. It is the most amazing dining experience I've ever had. Not only is this place unusual, but the menu is pretty unusual too, even for Taipei. So you've got the egg tofu and the bean curd. Deep fried cuttlefish balls, roasted fish jaw, salty and crispy fish mouth. Good thing I brought my adventurous appetite with me because this is definitely going to be interesting. This place is amazing. Look at this. It's just chalk block with puppets. All these little tiny handheld puppets over here, and then there's the half life size puppets on this side of the wall. Kids love coming here to learn about their cultural heritage, hands on, and with no strings attached. Back here, the smack dab in the middle of the restaurant, this is where the stage is. And then just behind the stage is the tiniest of tiny kitchens. Talk about multitasking. Mr. Chen is the restauranteur, the puppeteer, and the chef. Fish lips. I mean, how often do you get to order those at home? Basically, Mr. Chen has two woks. One is full of oil, and he uses it for deep frying. And the second one's for stir frying. And here he just put in some chilies and a whole pile of garlic. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. And here go the fish lips. You know, I've got to say, this is making my own lips water. Wow, this looks great. You know, the first thing you notice is the texture. It's kind of like a bit chewy, like a big chunk of gum, and then you kind of get a bit of a crunch in the center. Definitely an acquired taste. Have you ever had a fish lips before? Yeah, never in my life. Taiwanese cuisine is everything that you can cook within whatever that you're making. We eat almost every single part. You know, I've got to say, I have never had fish lips prepared this way. You can really feel the anticipation in the room. I mean, I think everybody is waiting for this puppet show to start. Showtime! What separates this experience from a typical theater is that you're surrounded by all these puppets and you're practically right on the stage. So you feel like you're part of the performance. Looks like a mop I have in my kitchen. These kids are loving this. I think the show is wonderful. Gene Simmons, eat your heart out. All right, so what do we have here? OK, so this is a spicy bean curd dish. Not terribly spicy. Oh, there it is. There it is. Kind of catches up with you. So Mr. Chen, do the puppets eat before or after the performance? Mm, the mouth cannot open. That's good. They won't eat you out of house and home. So Emily, what is this? It's egg tofu. Egg tofu. Oh, wow. It's like little pillows of custardy egg. Very light. What do you think about the food? The food is nice. Here I am eating squid balls and other exotic Taiwanese cuisine, surrounded by school children. And everywhere I look, I feel like I'm being watched by a puppet. It's quite surreal. So what do you think about the food in this place? It says he flips for it. During dinner, each customer is given a puppet, so you become a part of the performance. You know, this so transcends a typical kind of dinner theater environment. This restaurant really exemplifies everything that the Taiwanese are proud of. You know, we're very serious about food. We're very serious about our culture and our arts. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, shoot, we do all. about to be humiliated. One thing you know, I'm eating dinner. The next thing I'm back here is part of the puppet show. Food, the 
contagious energy of the audience and the puppet show, I mean, you just can't help but be sucked into it all. I tell you, this place brings out the big kid in all of us. If you've ever been accused of having the table manners of a Neanderthal, then the Pravic restaurant in Prague is definitely the place for you. Oh, this takes me way back. Way, way back. The Pravic restaurant is a Stone Age restaurant uh, where you can eat with your hands and entertain with cavemen. Pravic takes you back 200,000 years to prehistoric times when humans were wild, primitive, and savage. When you walk in the cave, you are welcomed by cavemen. I would like a table for one. I gotta talk to someone in HR about their hiring process. Ah, the menu. Yeah, you must right. Sleep there. Does it uh, make you kind of wish that you lived 100,000 years ago? Yes, definitely. Really? Especially the communication here. How's the saber-toothed tiger here? <laughs> Food with bones. Spare ribs, knuckles, T-bone steaks. Do you recommend the woolly mammoth? <laughs> I gotta say, the decor in this place is so dated. Jurassic cheese ball and apple, shaman special, and fried chicken dinosaurian. Can you describe the concept of the food for me? Meat, meat, and meat. <laughs> I don't think a vegetarian would survive here. I'd like to place my order, please. So what do all you cavemen servers do after you finish work? I say, uh, I take the rest of the meat and go to other caves. If you were living about 100,000 years ago, this is probably what your apartment would have looked like. Woolly mammoth tusks, primitive tools. Bones, sacrifice, a virgin. I think he said he wants to find a virgin. <laughs> In this room? <laughs> if I had to choose between the prehistoric time or the today time, I would probably choose the prehistoric. The servers here are very serious about their roles. You have five? It's crazy here. It's really crazy. How was the service? Service is great here. His smart acting, smart professional wrestler. <laughs> and a lot of attitude. Bad. Big chunk of grilled meat, chicken sautés. So tell me, what do you do to get into character? I stop showering. Well, I suppose if you're being served by a caveman, I guess I'll eat like one, too. Mm -hmm. oh, it's good. I had a lot of meat. Lots of meat. <laughs> really, lots of meat. <laughs> Pretty simple, nicely seasoned, very tender. That deep meat flavor really comes through. This will go down really well after a long day on the hunt. I feel nothing, though. Where's Fred? My husband not working. <laughs> <laughs> what I love most about this restaurant is the fact that you get to interact with the waitstaff. Special coffee. Special coffee? For you. Wilma knows how to take care of a man. Good. No, no. Come on down, there's a whole other level downstairs. You check out the roots of this tree. It's as if the cavemen dug a level below the first floor. Oh, look at that. Wings and ribs. Just the kind of meal you'd want to stave off extinction. Look how generous these ribs are. Very tender, too. Nicely cooked. What did you have for dinner? Chicken mom. It was delicious. Ah, look at these buffalo wings. Very nice honey garlic glaze. Wings are cooked perfectly. How do you decide what to tip your server here? Well, what about matches? Matches. <laughs> Excellent idea. It gets all over your hands. Tastes like it could have been grilled over a fire. Oh, it's very good. That was good. It's really good. Provic is part Stone Age, it's part steakhouse, and it's part improv. Unless you're stuck in the Ice Ages, it's hard not to have a good time here.
The Pudding Club right here in Gloucestershire, England, proves once and for all that you can have your cake and eat it too. We have a squidgy chocolate and nut pudding. Let the games begin. And cinnamon crumble. Pudding Club's mission to preserve the heritage of the Great British Pudding. Delicious traditional English puddings with lots of custard. At tonight's meeting of the Pudding Club, we'll be serving seven puddings. For over 25 years, the Pudding Club has made an entire meal of delicious desserts. I've never had anything like this before. Normally, one pudding is more than enough for me. From cake to crumbles, in Britain, pretty much anything can be pudding. The Pudding Club meets every Friday. People come from far and wide to feast on delicious puddings. We get people from all over the world, from uh, Canada, from Australia, Japan. It's all about indulgence. It's all about being naughty, a bit of nostalgia. When we bring them into the room, there's going to be pomp, circumstance, cheering, madness. John Roly Polly! We've got three rules, and you're going to have to obey these rules as well. First rule, you can only come to the pudding buffet at my invitation. And we want to do that so that people don't come up in one big scrum. It's not like a rugby match. It's a very sophisticated evening, you'll see. Of course. Yeah. Rule number two is you can only try one pudding in your bowl at one time. And then rule number three, most important, is you can only come back up to the pudding buffet when you finish the previous portion. Clean bowls, yeah? Clean bowls. You just wait. By the time you get to pudding number five, you're going to wish that it wasn't your turn. <laughs> we'll see. So what do you got there? Oh, I'm ginger. Well, that looks delicious, too. And you've been very conservative with your portion there. Well, I've got to get through another six. <laughs> How do you know that? Oh, our table's been called. <laughs> Going up to the buffet, a lot of pressure. I have no idea what I'm going to have. What is this? This is treacle. Uh, treacle. That looks so good. What do you recommend with this? Um, probably the custard or the jam. So this is the treacle. Oh. oh, that is so good. It's actually like a sponge cake that has been soaked in caramel taffy. I can't imagine anything tasting better, and this is just my first of seven puddings. Cinnamon and banana pudding! Is it a bit weird to you to come out for an evening where basically everything you're eating is pudding? No. <laughs> what do you got your eyes on here? All of it. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. I'm getting my bananas, I'm getting my lemon, my raspberry jam. It's got raspberries, part of my fibre day. It does seem very unusual. Yeah, I think we're a bit eccentric, aren't we? I got the chocolate pudding and uh, I got lots of chocolate sauce on it as well. The only shame is I couldn't get a chocolate wafer, you know. That would have been nice. I love apple crumble. It's got a lovely smell. Smell that. Yeah. Uh, and Sorry. What, what, what you, yeah, yeah, thanks yeah. for tempting I'm, me like that no, before my table's I've involved. Got, I've got to go. It's getting cold. Uh. <laughs> Sussex pom pudding. <laughs> So I've got the Sussex Pond. That's the lemony dessert. Sussex Pond is a suet pudding filled with whole lemons, and the lemons represent the frogs in the pond of juice. So we've got the self-raising flour, suet in the bowl, some milk. So this will make a nice smooth dough, a little bit of butter, and some nice dark lemon sugar. So you're going to melt the butter and caramelize the, the sugar, Yeah, right? and it's going to go into a nice sort of caramelized sauce. That's going to go in the steamer to cook for three hours. If you like lemons, you'll like it. That's beautiful. It's sort of like lemon meringue meets toffee pudding. <laughs> Pear and ginger roulade. <laughs> I'd like to have that last bit of uh, pear meringue. This has gone from being a sprint to being a marathon. The record number of puddings eaten by one person was 25 portions of pudding. And how are you feeling? You're looking like you're really slowing down here. Capital. Yeah, she's out. No more puddings for us. How many did you get through? Uh, five. I think my best is 13 in a night. Time for my last pudding, the chocolate pudding. I'm just saving that to last, is it? Oh, I think I can do a little more than that. Because that's not healthy. Would you like some chocolate sauce with that? You better believe it. This one's so much different from the rest. It's a deep, dark chocolate pudding with chocolate sauce on top of it, just making it even that much chocolatier. So good to the last drop. <laughs> Do you think this is weird at all to be 
sitting here eating dessert after dessert after dessert. Yes, I've not come across it anywhere else. This is a little bit weird. It's a little bit different, but it's great. It's it's very British. It's been a truly amazing and fulfilling experience. Well, they say that the English love their sweets. Clearly, the proof is in the pudding. The concept's brilliant. Whether it work in other countries, I don't think so, because we're the best at pudding making, and we're the best at pudding eating.